I don't know where I got to with this thing on the last video because I haven't touched it for a couple of weeks because I've had a couple of weeks off, well a week, I didn't do, whatever. Uh, yeah, I've got to fit this BMS, I've got to get it done now. Uh, the soldering on this looks pretty good so I'm not going to take these off on this one. Purely, I'm going to wire it up and that's it. So these 8 AWG are going to take all the two in parallel. The reason why they put these two in parallel is to share the load. Um, this will be okay with that. I'm not making much sense today. These two in parallel will be fine for handling the current that this is going to kick out. So, I've got all my cables, got everything over there. What I'm going to do is get the dust off it, going to get the case, put it back in the case and away we go again. Sorry about the glare off this, it won't be there for very long. Uh, this is what I use, which is basically gaffer tape. And I hope to God I've got enough. If I haven't, well, I haven't. That's just typical. Uh, that piece there is just the backing piece. I've run out. I needed that much actually. No, I need another strip down there. I've got to get some anyway. Doesn't matter. In the bin. This has got to be wired up to these. I don't know how yet. I think I'm going to do a, a quick and dirty sort of option with these. I'm just going to cut these and I'm going to put these connectors on the end of it so I can put them straight into the the connectors themselves. The one thing you don't want to do on this thing is when you're putting connectors, if you're putting bare connectors on like this is here, is leave them bare because otherwise if two, two of them short out you're in trouble. I mean really I shouldn't have done this, all I've done is cut them off. Um, if any of those touch there is going to be smoke. Not a lot because this will act like a fuse wire but there will be smoke. I'm going to try and explain something which a lot of people don't understand is that these things have to go at the very most negative part of the battery. So after all your, your ancillaries and everything else are all connected, this has to go at the very end. What it does is, because it's DC, when it's draining the battery, the last possible drain source is the BMS. And that's how it, how it measures its current. It's basically through voltage drop. So what happens is your positive, you'll get your power coming out of the positive and it'll be sucking it through the battery. This is as easy as I can explain. It's technically not right, but this is an easy explanation. So your, your positive will be drawing the current out of the battery and it'll be going through the battery and then out of the battery. This is your negative, your most negative point. Mm. So what you do is you connect that, where is it, you connect B negative to battery negative and then this goes in between and then that will go to whatever other negative thing there is, I don't know where it goes to actually, actually it goes to the battery output. I can't explain it, I can't, if I could put arrows and shit, I, 
go and have a look how a BMS works. Uh, somebody can explain it a hell of a lot better than me, believe me, I'm, I'm shit. I know how it works, I can't explain it. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, um, that has got to go onto there, and then that will go up there somewhere. I'm going to get some link wire, which I've got somewhere, I don't know where, and I'm going to wrap it round, and I'm going to get my blow lamp, I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to solder the shit out of it. Found it! This is link wire, which is, I don't know what it's made out of, metal. I've got one of these things. It wasn't orange through choice, I'm not trying to say anything, okay. The, and my soldering iron, which I'm going to get down, and then I've got to solder that. So that'll be the battery negative done, and then I can start soldering the uh, balance leads up. Yeah, I've had to use insulation tape on that. Insulating tape. Oh, fuck. I've had to use insulating tape on that. It's, I can't, the heat shrink that I put on is gone. It's completely solid, so I can't use that. Now the idea of it is now, I've got to wire these up first. Oh no, I've still got to extend the Bluetooth module. Oh crap. I'll test it first. I've got to make sure the BMS works first anyway, so... I've wired the right hand side of the battery up. Uh, sorry I can't, sh I can't show you because it's just so... I can't, <laughs> I can't get it on camera. Basically that one goes to the negative, the battery negative, and then that one goes to the first positive, and then the next positive, 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 positive. What you do, when you wired it all up and when you've got them all all linked, you get your meter, you put your negative terminal on there and then you put your pos positive probe on there and then there and then there and it should go up by you know around about 3.7 volts whatever it is if it jumps around as you're going up then you've got something wrong somewhere they're not easy to do I, mean, I don't know how many I've done now but they're, they're not easy to do that's the first thing and the second thing it doesn't matter how many times you do it, it's always nerve-wracking. It don't matter. So, you have to be methodical and bloody careful. You can't see it. Unless I hold it up, you might be able to see some flashing lights in there. It's all working, it's balancing, everything's working fine at the minute. So, now I know it works, I'll disconnect it and then I can put the... Uh, extend the Bluetooth module. I'm not looking forward to it. And these boards have changed. These control boards have changed quite dramatically. Uh, these are all the opto isolators, and these are the balance resistors. And you'll notice there's only actually one bank of balance resistors, whereas on this one, hang on, this is one of the old ones, or this is my old one. There's two banks of balance resistors there in series. So it looks like they've just basically doubled it up so they'll handle a lot more current without getting too hot. Uh, this is the side where the, the heat sink goes over and you can see it's only one small uh, block of heat sink stuff. There's also another bank. I don't get it because there's nothing that goes on that. So you've got two banks of resistors, one on either side, and I think they're actually linked, or are they... I think they're... No, they are linked. 
I don't quite understand why there's two banks. Anyway, a lot of people have asked me about the Bluetooth module. Uh, that's where the Bluetooth module was and this is now where the Bluetooth module is. Because I've got a carbon fibre case, I'm not going to get a signal inside it. Uh, I fell uh, foul to that last time, so I had to extend it. Now you only actually need four wires. That one there is the TX, the next one down is the RX, and then you've got 3.3 volts and ground. So they're the only ones you actually need, and quite literally all you do is you extend it. And the same with the buzzer, uh, because I'm not going to be able to hear it in the case, you can extend that as well quite literally two wires and that's it. What I do to take the old or take this off to extend it on the antenna part if you just get a, a scalpel blade underneath it very very carefully and just leave it there and then all these pads which are actually tinned that you can see they're the ones that have actually got the solder on so you just hold the knife under there to, to just create a slight bit of pressure and then you just start dabbing all these and then they slowly start lifting and then you move it a bit further in, a bit further in. It's a very slow process. If you go too fast you will rip the pads off, believe me you will, because I did it on the first one. But yeah, it, it does come off and then you clean the pads up, obviously extend it. I don't know why they put loads, they actually plastered this with the conformal coating. And it was also all over the, the balance resistors. I wish they wouldn't do it because conformal coating is a good insulator so I'm not getting the, the thermal transfer which is what you want on balance resistors. I'm going to put it back in the battery and then I can route all these things out the back so as I can have them external. Power button, the button has changed, you don't have to solder anything anymore, it's just a connector. I've got, oh, I've got to do the temperature sensors as well which I think is that one. They're the balance connectors, there's a the temperature sensor and I think that one's the LCD or the other way around, I don't know. So I'm going to fit that and then I'll come back and hopefully everything will work perfectly. Well as you can see it's actually working, thank God. I was so worried about connecting all this thing up and then finding out it don't work. It's been balancing now for around about 6 hours at 150 milliamps. I'm just testing to see how warm this thing gets without any active cooling on it. Uh, it's looking good actually. I reckon 150 milliamps is around about the limit with no cooling and I reckon about 200 milliamps or maybe 220 milliamps with cooling. So what I've got to do uh, <laughs> that thing down there has to fit in here in these recesses here somehow. <laughs> it was tight last time but I didn't have all these wires. The, the, the wires were cut to length but this time it ain't going to be easy. And you can see on the app that we're running at uh, what is it, 41, 41 millivolt difference. So that's been going now constantly for, for 14 hours. So I'm going to see what's what? Cell number 6 See, cell number six is still low, but it's, I mean, it, it's been standing now for a long, long time at 41 millivolts. That ain't bad. So, I wish I'd have stripped it, but I didn't want to strip it because of the amount of work that's involved. It's working though. It's going back together in a bit. <laughs> 